Hello, everyone, and welcome to our 14th FreeBSD Friday. I am Deb Goodkin, and I'm the Executive Director of the FreeBSD Foundation. Thank you so much for joining us for this introductory FreeBSD series. We've been so excited to provide this content with you. Just so you know, this isn't the end of the series. We're just done for the year. So if you've missed any of the talks, you can find the recordings on our website and the project's YouTube channel. I posted the link in the IRC channel to our website that has all the links that you need. So let's get started with our talk. Well, first I wanna start with, if you have a question, please post it in the IRC channel. And if it is a, actually a question, put a cue right before it so we know that it's a question. So today our presentation is an introduction to FreeBSD documentation by Sergio Carlovilla. Let me tell you a little bit about Sergio. Sergio has been contributing to the FreeBSD project since 2018 and has been involved in the migration of our website and documentation to Hugo and ASCII Doctor. He's from Valencia, Spain, and today he's going to show us the documentation tool chain. So now I'll hand this off to Sergio. Hi, thanks Deb for the introduction. I'm going to share the presentation. Okay. Okay. Oop. Okay, in this presentation, I'm going to introduce the new FreeBSD documentation system. Uh, in the last year, I have been working in the migration from Docbook and X XML from, well, to Hugo and Nasty Doc. And well, about me, as Deb says, I'm Sergio Carlavilla, I'm from Valencia, Spain, and right now I am working as a full stack developer and soft, uh, software architect in the Daifresh, a Spanish company. Well, in this presentation, I'm gonna talk about first, what is Hugo? What is Acidopt? Oh, this letter. Acidopt versus, uh, versus Docbox syntax. Why this change? the old stack, the new stack, an example of an article and a book, and of course the acknowledgements. Well, first, what is Hugo? Hugo, Hugo is a static site generator written in Go, originally, originally created by Steve Francia in 2013, being able to generate most websites within seconds. Hugo is renowned as the world's fat fastest framework for building websites, thanks to not only being built with Hugo, but also conscientious efforts by its developers to benchmark and increase performance. I took this information from the Wikipedia, as you can see. And what is ACIDOC? Well, ACIDOC is a human readable document format, semantically equivalent to Docbook XML, but using plain text markup conventions. Artidoc documents can be created using any text editor and read at this. And I also took this in this information from the Wikipedia. Okay. As you can see, the, in the left side, there's a, an example of Artidoc uh, syntax. And in the right side, you are going to see the same document, but in Docbook. As you can see, the ACIDOC version is much more cleaner. Imagine that you are uh, a person not involved in the, in the computer science field. You are a person who wants to contribute to the FreeBSD documentation project. And you don't want to, to learn, for example, HTML or XML or some, some other, well, we're gonna say a strange technology for a non-techie person. If you want to contribute right now, you need to learn all of these tags. For example, here you can see the title. You need to open a lot of tags. And then in, you are going to see the person name, doc, writer, and the email. As you can see in the doc book, in the doc book is really strange. 
And in the ACIDOC, it's a very much, much cleaner example. You only need to, to write. Imagine you are writing a, a tale or a story. It's, it's the same. You only need to, to, to know a few tags. For example, this symbol is for write a title, the main title. This symbol is the second title. This is for a list. And this is an example of, of code. As you can see, for example, I think that the most, the most, where you can find the, the complexity is in the itemized list. Here, you only need to put the symbol. And in the notebook, you need to open an itemized list, add a list item, then add a para, and then write the, the text. You need to learn, okay, we are, we are going to count one, two, three tags to create a simple list. The ASCII-DOC version is much, much easier. And well, why this change? Well, first, the book is not easy to learn. As I, as you can see, there's a lot of, uh, of tags you need to learn first and start to start contributing to the project. Second, obviously, it's more easy to write documentation in ASCII-DOC. As you can see, you only need to learn a few tags. For example, other remarkable section is the link. To create a link, you need to open a link tag, then add an attribute, and then put the, the description and the H, the reference. Here, whoop, sorry. Here, you only need to create, well, to put the, the link and then the text, it's much more easier. Second, reduce the complexity of the tool chain. Well, right now, if we go to the next, I'm gonna go back later, but if we go to the next uh, presentation, the next slide, the old stack are Dogbook, XLLT, and Apache FOB to generate well, Apache for, for the generate the XSLT. This is used for the website. Pure HTML4 and XML. These two sections are for the website. The book app for the articles and the books. Perl for generate some parts of the website. Ghost script for the PDF and a lot. And trust me. A lot, lot, lot of make files. There's an, um, a really amount of make files. If you want to make a, a change to the core of the website, you need to, to go so deep in some strange make files. Well, not as strange, but uh, at least really difficult to understand and maintain. The new stack are gonna gonna be only Hugo, ASCII doctor in that case, because ASCII doc is deprecated from January of this year because he's written in Python 2. ASCII doctor is written in Ruby and is currently maintained. And Python 3, you only need to, these two, these three things. Okay, I'm gonna get back. And well, there's another thing that I want to, to point. Right now, if you want to, to make some change in, in our website, you need to, to install FreeBSD and then make the change, build the website, create a patch. Imagine that you are not, you are not using FreeBSD in the desktop. You are using only FreeBSD in the server. Well, you need to create a virtual machine with, for example, virtual box or whatever you want, install FreeBSD, make a change, build the website, check everything is correct and send the patch to, the, to our fabric, fabricator. With that new tool, in Hugo, RC Doctor and Python 3 are also supported in GNU Linux, Windows and MacOS, you can contribute and it doesn't matter the operating system you are using. Well, 
the old stack, as, uh, as I said, is dogbook, X, XLT, and Apache 4, pure HTML form. Right now, it's going to be HTML5, Perl, GhostScript, and a lot of make files. Uh, the new stack, U, RC, Doctor, and Python 3. And well, right now I'm going to show you an example of, of a website. Okay, I'm gonna share you with you. Sorry, I want to, uh, okay, there we are. Okay, there we are. Well, where is the cursor? Where is the pointer? Whoop. Okay, I'm gonna reboot the machine. Sorry, hold a second. I'm rebooting the VirtualBox machine. I'm gonna share my desktop. Okay. Well, meanwhile, Meanwhile, the machine are starting. I'm gonna explain, well, there's not much here, but well. Right now, in a few moments, I'm gonna start uh, writing an article or a section of the book to show you. But well, as you can see, the, the difference are very, very huge. The AC doctor is much more simpler. Okay. There we are. I don't know why the machine was freezed. But well, it doesn't matter. We are here. Okay. Right now, first, I'm going to explain uh, how I build the new website. I split it, uh, it into three parts. One of them, it will be the documentation when you could find the well, all, all of uh, the languages that we support. If you enter, for example, in the end, you are going to find two folders, the articles. I removed all the, the articles to improve the, the build of the website since are in a presentation. I don't want to, to waste a lot of time in the, in the buildings. But if you, if you we go, for example, for Brazilian, we are gonna, you can see all the articles. For example, if we enter the committer git in Portuguese, or in Brazilian Portuguese, Okay, this is a real example of how how the or new documentation looks like. You can see these first lines are for Hugo, and these lines from the line ten to the end is going to be the RC doctor the RC doctor section. Okay, as you can see in the eleven line. We are going to tell the AC doctor what, what kind of, of doc type we are going to use. In our case, there are only two, article and book. This is for the tab table of content, the type of uh, icons, the sec number, sec num levels, the source highlighter, experimental, the, the doc title. This is the, tr the translation for, 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 for Portuguese. In Spanish, is the same word very curious. The parse significant, 
in Spanish is the same, and also in, in the chapter is significant. And then we are gonna uh, we are gonna have the the article. Okay. As you can see, there's an an include file here. There's an include file here. And why this means? Well, as I told you before, I split the the documentation in three parts: the documentation, the share, and the website. The documentation, obviously, the articles and the and the books. The website, okay, the website, our website, and share is uh, share information between articles and the and the website. And why I split this in three, well, in two parts: documentation and website. Well, in first place we are gonna reduce uh, build times. Imagine that you, you, make a, you make a change in the website. Why we should rebuild everything? We are gonna lose a lot of time, a lot of time. It's true that Hugo, it's a very quickly generator, but well, our documentation, it's very, very, very huge. In my, this is not my, my laptop, it's the laptop of my employer. In my laptop, it's a uh, ThinkPad X200 from 2008, a laptop with 12 years ago. Compa build everything took nearly seven, eight minutes. So if we split this, we can reduce the build time. Maybe for a desktop user, don't much more, more sense, but for a server, it will be much better. Okay, well, the, as I told you, the include file, share, PTBR, URLs, and if we go to share, uh, PTBR, whoop, here are gonna have the, we are gonna have the, all the, the links to the, to the books. So with, with, in that way, you can use something like, imagine that you want to create a link for a link, a link to the handbook. You don't need to care where the handbook is located or where the handbook will be located. So if the handbook changes the place, you don't need to look where the handbook are linked and change the link. You make this, Oop, sorry. And you and as the doctor will take care of where the handbook is. We de I declare this, this section, this, this web, and the handbook is, where is it? Here. So I, at the end, this link will be rendered as this, whoop, with this, without this slash, will be this. But okay, we are gonna build the website to show you some real example, okay. Here we need to open a terminal and run Mac. These first scripts are the are the scripts used to create the the index for the, the handbook. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you. And well, to continue with the explanation, well. As I told you, it's gonna be articles, books. I remove all the books to improve the to improve the building times. And there, whoop, and there we are gonna have all the parts of our handbook. Okay, I'm gonna take a look. This is still, still building. Well, these scripts are these scripts. This one are used to build this part. If you enter in one, come on. Ah. Well, remember this is a virtual machine, so the performance is not very good. But well, as you can see, there's an explanation co-generated by the FreeBSD documentation tool chain. Do not edit. Please don't check this file manually. Well, it's normal. Run make to blah, blah, blah. 
And this is generated by the, by the scripts, okay? Why I need to, to make this? Well, ASCII Doctor is, the, when the creator of ASCII Doctor started this, they don't have in mind uh, a book split it in parts as we have. They are, they created this program with a long book in mind. For example, you can see this much better if I saw the talk, if I show you the Ask the Doctor Manual. I, come on. Well, doesn't matter. I'm gonna explain you the website. Well, first I, I, I explain it only the content folder, but well, there we are. Yeah, there we are. Okay. So I'm gonna go to the RC doctor manual. Meanwhile, this loads. Okay, I'm gonna uh, tell you what these all these folders means. The make files obvious is the who are going to build the, the website, the license obvious, the besties or pets, authors, the people who contribute to this project. Tools are the scripts used to generate the website. This I need to change the handbook, the handbook name because it's not the the real issue use it for all the books. And these scripts are all the scripts for the PHP keys. Well, archetypes, I, it's like templates. It's how Hugo called templates. In config, the configuration, one main file and then one by language. Content, the content. Resources, what well, this is a, this is a, is generated by Hugo, public the same. Here are the share documents. A static, it's where you are going to put the static things. For example, in the articles are images, in the books the same. PHP keys are the FreeBSD, I don't know what happened. Freebie, uh, PHP keys is where the PHP is on the FreeBSD developers. And well, there's another one. Source is the source code. Okay. Themes are the bestie theme, is how I call the theme. Tools is what I told you. And the website follows the same exactly, the same exactly folders. In the content, you are gonna see the, the website in different languages. And well, I think that this just loaded, okay. Whoop. Okay, we are gonna close this. Okay, this is what I'm talking about. As you can see, well, the ASCII doctor user manual, we can trade this as our handbook is the, it could be the same. It's, this is the ASCII Doctor Handbook, okay? As you can see, there's one large file, a really huge file. Instead of having this split it into chapters like us, they are only have one huge file. So I'm gonna open this, okay. I'm gonna show you the handbook, okay. And this is the handbook rendered in, with Hugo and Nasty Doctor. You are gonna see, so there are no more difference between Dogbook and Nasty Doc, Doc because I want to render exactly the same. For example, if we go to the well, as you can see the part one, this 
parts, this this part, this table of contents are generated with Python. Why? Well, because I told what I told you is the RC doctor is not prepared by default to split the document into a different parts. You need to make this by hand. And how I solve this? Well, with Python. Here is the chapter one introduction. The chapter two, two, where, for example, this is a whoop. You are gonna solve this. You are gonna see uh, where can I? Okay. These are the the first difference. The admonitions. These admonitions are the acid doctor admonitions, and why I used it instead of the old note. Well. You need to take in mind that this document later will be uh, rendered in a PDF. And the PDF doesn't understand the, the, the doc book admonition, so I, so I need to use it. This is one of the three differences from the old version. The other one are the keys. And you can, for example, this. Well, from my point of view, it, it's really it's more nice. I, I I prefer this this kind of of shapes, and the other it's the tables. I don't know if there are any one any table here. Uh, I I saw one. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna look. There we are. And I also took the the style tables from the AC doctor. I think it's much more nice. And well, an example of a change in the book. Okay, books. We are going to handbook via the install. Is in the, in the second chapter. As I told you before, imagine that you want to. If we go back to the presentation, imagine that you want to create a list. You need to make to, to learn a lot of tags. But if we go here, whoop, we only need to make this symbol. For example, imagine that we want to add another one. For example, uh, this paragraph talks about virtual machines. I don't know. You only need to take care of what you are writing for. You don't need to, to take care about anything else. For example, I'm gonna save and Hugo are going are gonna to rebuild this. Look, you don't need to, to compile again, to execute make again. You don't need to, to take care about the building. You can make any change and Hugo are gonna rebuild the website for you. One other thing that it's gonna be much better in Hugo. Imagine that you are not uh, you are not writing a, any document in English. Imagine, for example, I'm from Spain. Imagine that you are writing a document in Spain. You are, for example, the the same text. We are, if we are from Spain, we are gonna put same card. If we write this, there's nothing to care about. But imagine that you you need to write a word, for example, I don't know, a word with a, an accent. A, for example, this word. You need to take take care about this. The I with the accent in docbook to ensure that this will be rendered correctly, you need to write something like this. So you need to learn first all of these tags, every one of these tags to write 
uh, root document. But if you are using another language than not English, you need to learn also this tags. For example, this is for the A with the accent, but if you are using the, well, in Spanish is like the Ñ, this will be, and for example, in, in, in English, the, you are using the symbol only at the end, but if we are in Spanish, we have this. So we need to take care about this and write. I, I look. I don't remember how to to write this. It's uh, well, I don't remember. In that case, if I am a random user, I need to go to to Google, look for the symbol, pass the symbol, uh, paste the symbol. If we are in acid doctor, I don't need. I don't need to take care about that kind of things. And any other thing that that I don't like when I have been contributing to with Dogbook is the maximum characters you are you need to to, to have in your in your line. Right now, if you are using if you are writing Dogbook, the maximum characters per line is 70. So in Asti Doctor, if we make the same, this will be something like, you need to split the lines and then run the Igor tool to, to check if the, everything is correct. In Hugo, you don't need to take care about anything of this. You only need to take care about writing. For example, I, we made a, a basic a basic change, but for example, imagine that we want to, this is a note, we can add, for example, warning. It's very easy. And this rebuilds. Whoop where I put this. Okay, this is a warning and we can change this tip. Come on. And Hugo rebuilds the, rebuild, re, rebuilds it. Okay, we are gonna, I'm gonna show you for example Okay, we, I show you the, the variables, the title. This is for create IDs. In, okay, I'm gonna make some zoom. Okay, as you can see, this is the ID of an, of the introduction in the set one. And the, this is the same, is the, whoop, is the ID. This is how Hugo creates the IDs. And for example, the images, this is how Hugo creates the images. And this is for the source. I think that this is much more cleaner or much more easier for a non-tech non person to to understand and to contribute. And well, okay. We also have a, we also have the same, we also have the, the book with all the chapters united as we have before. Two, and well, I'm going to continue with the presentation. Okay. Oh, that's why. Well, and how I made this conversion from Dubbook? Well, from the website, I use Pandoc, 
with Houston Python scripts. And for the doc book, for the doc section, documentation section, the articles and the books, I use uh, DocBook RX. It's, uh, this software was developed by the creator of Asti Doctor, but I need to to create to take the, the software from Halan and made some changes to fit our kind of documentation. And also, and uh, I made uh, some custom scripts. If you want to to check these scripts, they are in my in my personal GitLab. Um, there are two rep split two separate repositories, FreeBSD, free Hugo, Docbook. This is the software used to convert the articles and the and the books and the FreeBSD Hugo convert tools. This, these are the all the scripts. They are one for the advisories, other for the authors, the commercial content, the errata, events, mailing list, news. And there are the, the software used to convert the articles and the and the and the books. The truth is that the they are there there. I can't find any tool already developed to convert to transform our website because it's very very complex. And well. Well, very slow. And well, the conclusions from is that the use of Hugh doc is viable. It works very well. They are well. Uh, sorry for interrupt. Uh, I want to show you. I showed you only English, but I can show you. For example, I disable um, the, all the languages except three, four. Because I want, as I told, improve the compilation. But I, I, I'm going to show you, for example, Japanese. The handbook in Japanese. Uh, I, I, Hugo fits really well, not only with English, but with the other languages. As you can see, this is the Japanese. I also have the Spanish, I, I think. Yes, this is my, my mother language. And this is the, the document rendered in Spanish. So this is why I think that Hugo, it's very viable to use because support not only English, but also another languages. And as, as I told you, it's very easy to, to learn. In second place, it will be help to attract new contributors since it have a lower learning curve. This is what I, well, is what I, what I showed you in the in the past slides with the. Sorry to bother you with that, but I think it's 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 really important. It's really important to to put in the to imagine if you are a new contributor, if you want to learn, if you need to learn this or instead of this. And then, whoopa. And well, as I told you, it will reduce build times and simplify the tool chain. The tool chain, well, I, when, when I started this, this project, when I started to participate in this project, I needed to make uh, to make a lot of archaeologists to learn how the website, the old website, is is created. And what I can tell you is, if you are not the creator of the website, it's gonna be very, very, very difficult to to understand the entire project and how every piece work with the other. This is a very very difficult. And well, 
the acknowledgement, I want to, to say thanks for Gabor and Benedict. Gabor, it's my what my mentor in the Spanish section of the documentation, and Benedict is what he, he was my mentor in the English section of the documentation. Both of them helped me so much uh, to start in the FreeBSD community, and they. Both of them are really, really, really nice people and help me so much, really. And I need to say thanks publicly to both of them and to, to Sin, who, who also helped me with Dogbook, um, sorry, with Asi Doctor, and to the FreeBSD Foundation to give me the opportunity to present this, this project. And well, before starting with the with the question, there's one thing left. Then I, I show you the documentation, but I, I, I don't show you the, the website. Well, the website also also deserve to be to be shown. Okay, here the the build is gonna be much more much more quick quicker before when sorry because the the documents are very uh, are very lower the the handbook it's a very huge piece of piece of text um, oh come on Well, as you can see, you don't need to take care about the is the port are used because Hugo is gonna take care of that. But well, meanwhile, I'm gonna show you, for example, the main make file, the main and the only make file in the project. Aye. Okay, this uh, this make file it, it's very easy. It's uh, where's the copyright, the SVN tag. Well, this is since the, migra the migration to Git is already complete. This tag is deprecated, but well, I need to upgrade this. And here you can saw the target, or if you want to generate all the website, generate in that way and compile if you want to build the website for put for example in nginx um, apache http or some http server software the maintainer where the python it's located where you it located the stages a message of course generate the releases run build and well there's no much to show here because it's very, very simple. If you go to the about, for example, everything is the same. Uh, a title, a main title, second title, the paragraph, some links, another title. It's, it's very simple. I even need to, to go deep in some strange configuration files on some strange uh, configuration scripts. It's very easy to understand for anybody. Oh, come on. Well, meanwhile, I'm gonna show you the thing. Well, we have uh, three folders in there. There are the, the languages folder right now it's for the N, Spanish, Japanese, uh, Dutch, uh, Chinese. Well, I always confuse. Uh, one of them is the traditional Chinese, and the other is the modern Chinese. Sorry, because I don't and I don't remember who is who. But for example, if we enter in the N file, we are going to find the the labels used by Hugo. And if you want to cre create another language, you don't need to go deep into some 
into a lot of HTML files and into a lot of make files. You only, for example, imagine that you want to add a French. This will be the process. Copy the English, rename to fr, continue, open the file, and start translating the, the, the labels to your language. It's very easy. It's only here. You don't need to deep inside anything. Okay, there we are. Okay, we are opening the link. And this, okay, I'm gonna make zoom. Oh, here, it's correct. And this is the same website rendered with Hugo and Arcee Doctor. This is in English. For example, you can go to About, uh, I don't know, Applications. Uh, well, it doesn't matter. The download section. But what I want to show you is the, for example, in Japanese, as you can see, Japanese works really well. For example, Chinese works really well. And we are going to return to the English. Okay. Okay. And Right now, if you have any question about the project, about the conversion, I'm gonna happy to, to ask. I, I have here the IRC. So, well, from my part, it's over. I'm gonna stop. I'll step in and um, ask some of the questions for you to help out. Um, so going back and let's see some of the questions that were posted earlier. Um, are there any plans to change current man file syntax? Current syntax is not very user friendly. I believe this is related to the man pages. Uh, well, about Igor, uh, you need. Uh, you need to keep the, the same use in demand pages because this uh, migration only affects the website and the documentation. This doesn't affect the demand pages. So you are not going, you don't need to use Hygor in Hugo, but you need to still use a uh, Hygor for demand pages. Okay, uh, let's see here. Any plans on using semantic line feeds for the new documentation? Uh, well, right now, uh, no. And he and he relate and he included a link. I don't know if you can see this here. Sergio, um, but it was the roadsmail.org, uh, one sentence per line, what he was referring to. Oh, uh, yes, uh, sorry. Yes, the idea of that, sorry, I wanna show you. The, uh, for example, this one. The idea of that is to use the one sentence per line. You don't need to, uh, you don't need to split the, the lines. You don't need to take care about the 70 characters. For example, we have 47, oh, 16. You don't need to take care about that, 17. So this, in Docbook, this should be right in, in that way, but not here. Can you do that? You can do that. Yes, of course. And and this is going to work in the same place, in the same way, for example. OK, I'm going to build. And as you can see, this render wood. But the idea of the idea of ASCII doctor is to use one sentence per line. 
not to split the lines, not to split the same line by each 70 charters. You don't need to take care about that anymore. That would be nice. Okay. Let's see. I think there's a question that's not related to the talk. Um, okay, so people are welcome to add any more questions. I know there's a delay uh, for streaming, and so we'll wait a little bit here. Uh, yes, well, if you don't have more questions, well, I can go some deep in the, in the configuration of the, how the themes are made. For example, in the website, well, the only section that I don't go so deep is the theme, sec theme section. We have, as I told before, the international section the static, we are gonna have well, in that place, the CSS, all the styles files, the images used by the, by the website. And right here, the, well, this is for, I don't remember the name of that tool of Google. It's the, uh, I don't remember the name of that tool for know who are who are entering the, the website and Google Analytics, sorry. Ah, it just popped up to my mind. It's for Google Analytics and the open search is for the, when I don't have the box right now, right here, but if you, can I make the tools to my, yeah, there we are, this box. All these files are, are for this. Okay. If you enter the, the, op the search section of our website, um, there are gonna be a pop-up and you can add, add the, the search for the man pages or, or messages in this, instead of looking in Google or Amazon, Bing or DuckDuckGo, you can look into our website. Well, uh, layout, okay. And in the layout, you are gonna have the, the HTML, because of course there are some HTML, the HTML of the website. For example, if we go to the default, because it's the, the, the default, Use it for any by default for any pages. Whoopa, sorry, I want to open it with Kate. Well, as you can see, it's very, very easy. It's a HTML5 uh, document with a lang, a partial. You don't with that. You don't need to repeat the code in in all the in all the documents. You can create a partial, which is which is here in the whoops, partial, sorry. In that case, it is site heat. So we are gonna open the site heat. And this is the heat of the page. It will be injected or it will be showed in every page. There will be another site header this is the navigation of the of the website, as you can see. And then it will be the content. What means this main? This main make reference to the to the uh, again the same error. This link makes reference to this. This site map, site map makes reference to, to this. And the title is the title that you are gonna you are gonna put in your file. For example, well, this is for the book, but, but sorry, but it's the same. 
this title security event auditing will be shown here. And the content is everything, is the rest. From here to the end, you don't need to take care about some configuration and well, if you are a tech, a tech person, you are gonna find this very easy to understand. It's a base of, it's a hit, there's a header, and there's a list, and a single. There's, all right. The list and the single are the same. This is because how Hugo works. Sorry. It's very easy to understand. You don't need to, to learn some XML or XSLT tags or, or process. Well, might be the most difficult part of the website is located here in the in event. Because where well, we have the event RSS and the calendar. But if we enter here, this is the most difficult part of the entire documentation. Not only the website, also the, the, the books and the articles. We, why? Because the events are not located into an HTML or an RCDoc file. The events are located in, in a 2M, OML file. I made this in that way because it's the way of, of, of the other of, is, is how the, our old website works. But instead an XM file, I locate it in a TOML. You lo lo load all the event and there may, well, it's, it's, it's gonna be so difficult to explain all of this, but at the end, this is, this one, well, there are no events right now, but this is this one. This code prints the image and load all the events which are located in the uh, static folder, um, sorry, in the data folder and event and you have one file per year, for example, for 2020. Oh, come on. You have the event. It's very easy to add another event. You create this tag, you give an ID, a name, uh, a direction, a start date and date, the country, country code, sorry, the country, the city and the site and the description. And this will be show it here, as you can see. This is maybe the most difficult part of the website because if you don't have the, you, if you don't have this file in your language, for example, imagine that you are translating the website to, I don't know, to French. It's already translated, but it's, it's, it's an example. Imagine that you are translating the, the website to French. If you don't have these, these files translated to your language by default the website the website are going to take the english version you don't need to take care about that this is because it's so long and so difficult well difficult it's not difficult but it's uh, really long to explain here and well i think that there's nothing more I want to tell you, if you don't have any more questions, I think that, well, we are one minute to finish. Well, a couple of questions came in. Um, actually, that was really helpful because that's the events is the, um, the area that I started um, at, you know, contributing to documentation. And, um, you know, it definitely wasn't straightforward for such an easy, seemed like such an easy thing to, to add an update. So, um, so I have to say first, I'm really excited about this um, and hopefully the project will adopt this soon, um, which gets to a question here from Guido uh, who asks, when is this going to be rolled out? <laughs> yes, this is, the, <laughs> this is the question. 
Well, in the, well, as I told you before, they, I split the project into, into three. The documentation is 100% complete. I don't have anything to do in, in this section. It's completed. Well, I need to think the last changes, but it will take, I don't know, one or two days at least. It's very quickly. And in the website, well, as you can see here, I only translated these languages, but there are so few left. Uh, I need to finish French, uh, Russian, uh, French, Russian, Hungarian, and maybe I have some left, but no, I don't know. I think that's correct. I need to finish these three languages. And of course, I need to update the FreeBSD documentation project primer to remove all the information about the docbook and docbook XML and HTML and change it to you and RC doctor. But after that, uh, everything is complete. But what you are asking me is a date. And right now I don't, I don't have that date to say this, well, it, I hope it could be before the end years, the, uh, the, the years end, but I don't know. I, I don't know. Okay, oh, rumor sorry. has it that, I guess rumor has it that it should be soon. At least yes. that's what I hear. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Um, great, I don't see any more questions and we've gone over the hour, so. Um, Oh, and I heard like maybe uh, a target date is before FreeBSD 13. So that would be exciting. Uh, yes. Great. Thank you so much uh, for the presentation. That was so helpful to understand now uh, the new new tools. And it's going to be so much easier um, even for tech people to just read uh, through the documentation and understand it without all that the other tags in there. Yes, I, when I started this, this is my main focus. Imagine that if you are not a techie person, but you want to contribute, you don't need to, to learn some, well, strange. It's not as strange if you are a tech person as you know XML or HTML, but if you are a, a person that only want to translate, I think it's gonna be more easier to, to convert, to translate from this one, it's uh, it's like, uh, imagine that you are reading a tale in your house, it's the same, it's, there's only text. Okay, yes, there are only some few configurations, but it's, it's of course, it's normal, but you can skip all, all of this and focus on this and write a documentation very quickly and in a very easy way. Yeah, I like that. Well, again, I want to say thank you so much for spending the time and um, and giving, well, spending all this time uh, switching the tools over for the project and all the work that you're going to do. Um, I assume you probably could use some help. And so if anyone's interested in helping, uh, reach out to Sergio and um, we can help connect you if you need this. Uh, information you probably, maybe you could post your email to you in the IRC channel so people know how to reach out to you or if they have any questions. So this was our last talk of the year and um, and we will start up again next year. Right now we don't have a schedule. Uh, we definitely have topics that we're working on. If you have any topics you'd like us to cover, uh, please let us know because we're always open to that. We basically we want to present information to you that will help you learn more about FreeBSD. So, and uh, most likely we will start up again um, either mid to the end of uh, January to just give us some time to put together the new schedule and, um, and, um, and I guess work on some other things in between. So I just want to say thank you again and um, see you next year. Mm. Bye. Bye. Thank you.